Yep. This would not trigger. That's correct. Um, but again, this is a base. This is the first version. The next version starts clicking on links. Next version starts interacting with text boxes, checking things, unchecking things. Uh, it, this isn't this isn't a you know a, a panacea. This isn't going to solve every single drive-by scenario. But one thing to keep in mind is malware authors. The more obscure they get about their selective serving, uh, the less payoff they're going to get on infecting pages. The drive-by download is so popular because it's the most efficient method of getting your stuff out there. If the user has to click on a particular button or perform some voodoo or type a secret code into the web page, then the, the, the rate of distribution will be negatively impacted quite a bit. And we can take steps to mitigate that uh, in, or mitigate some of the things that they would check for, like moving the mouse, as you mentioned. Uh, rollover was a big one for a while. The on clicks are another one. But generally, malware authors want it to be automated. As soon as you render the page, we want to exploit you. So while you bring up a very valid point, I don't think it's by any means a showstopper, and it's something that we'll continue to iterate on. Um, exploits and exploit detection is always a game of cat and mouse. There's no, this gets everything from now and forever. No one's going to figure out a way to circumvent it. Um, it doesn't work like that. It is a cat and mouse game. We'll get better. They'll get smarter. And the cycle will continue. So um, I have an unfinished feature. I don't know if some of you saw the antivirus column. Um, that's all in the works. We're going to actually run all the binaries through an antivirus engine. We're going to um, compute. Excuse me. Um, we're going to compute the, the SHA-1 hashes, the, and we're going to do fuzzy matching and all that other good stuff, and maintain libraries of different malware which being served. Try to match it back to the distribution point. This is all that wonderful BI stuff that I was talking about. It's not there yet. Uh, I didn't want to talk about it because it would, I'd be talking and not showing, and I don't like to do that. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a, that's a very valid weakness. It's if there, it, it, what comes down is an engineering decision, a trade-off. Do I want to implement? Um, you know, mouse overs or extra functions, or do I want to instrument Firefox? If we start seeing trends of, of or we start seeing indications that that Firefox becomes uh, a viable distribution vector for malware, then the first thing we're going to do is take all of these approaches, all these concepts, and we're going to probably be able to whip out a behavioral profile for Firefox in a, in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, instrument WebKit with a hell of a lot more ease than instrumenting Trident because I can actually read the source code. And then we do the same thing with Chromium and, and so on and so forth. It's a very valid point. The, the combination of OS and browser determines whether or not the exploit's going to run. So yes, we definitely miss out, uh, and we'd like to go there, but that's future work. The, the other problem is it becomes computationally expensive. Right now, I render the page once, and I can replay that, that render anytime I want. But for a switch in browsers, I would actually have to go and fetch the page again, because a lot of these exploits are fingerprinting me and, and serving me. So I would have to literally visit the page one time per configuration. Um, something we definitely want to do, but at the same time, it might be prohibitive because of the, the selective exploitation techniques that we just talked about. If I render it once with IE, I have to render it again with Firefox. That means I need another proxy and a bunch of other IPs so that they can't, or you know, different you know, geolocations. So, so it's, it's always cat and mouse, and that is something that we definitely uh, are looking for once we perceive more value. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in fact, it would be a different version of the VM in order to get the different operating, uh, to get the different browser. I wouldn't trust the browsers to live happily without stepping on each other um, for all the different feature sets. So if I wanted to implement Firefox, it would be a new VM type that would get thrown up, and then everything would be identical. Correct. Um, there, are, there are methods of spoofing that and actually 
letting it load the correct one. Um, if you haven't seen WepoWet, it's a great tool by uh, UCSB. Uh, they do very similar things where they look for selective branching and then go back and execute all the branches. They can do that because they're an emulator. Um, that means they don't have the scale, but at the same time, they got a lot more control about the render process. I, I like WebOet. I, I will not say anything bad about those guys. They've done some wonderful things. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Have a great day. <laughs>